Well, hey Gundam Maniacs, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. This one we're going to be looking at a Gumpla and kind of a neat one. It's the uh, Messer from Mobile Suit Gundam Pathway, uh, specifically ME02RF01, Messer type F01. So pretty cool, right? Because when we get to Hathaway, it's not necessarily Xeon yet. There's some Xeon sensibilities in the suit, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit. But before we get started, if you haven't, please subscribe. And if you think this is a cool video, give it a like. Make sure to check the links in the description below for the Discord, which is really awesome. And the Patreon, it has a lot of cool perks to help me out. But yeah, let's get started. Well, and here we have it. Here's a street build of the Messer. Really the only customization I did on this high grade. Panel lining, and I'll talk about that. Just a little bit of yellow coloring in some areas. I didn't even really top coat. Uh, there's some areas that I could have done customizing and I didn't, but I will actually get into that because it's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's kind of just take a look at this model for what it is. And I'm going to stand it next to something that should be in scale. Now, this is from the Robot Spirits line. Uh, I didn't happen to have any of my high grade Zaku's handy. Or I think it's a real grade that I have. Um, regardless, you know, we get to a point in the Mobile Suit Gundam timeline that you see Universal Century in in lore. They, they make the mobile suits bigger um, they, because they're just more powerful. They have more armaments to them, more armor. But it gets to a point, you know, it's more like after Hathaway where it starts being uh, smaller because they've got the new compact uh, Manofsky reactor. So it, it, it's just interesting that when it comes to a couple things to keep in mind when building a Gumpla, that even though this is high grade, it's still larger in comparison to like a, a high grade Zaku 2 if you were to get one. So maybe there's some thought put into that, maybe to keep costs down while having more plastic. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's let's look more into it. All right. And just to kind of look at everything, I'll just kind of go up and down. We'll look a little bit at articulation and some of the design choices here with a little bit of the customization. You know, one main thing when we look at this whole beast is there's a lot of opportunity for panel lining. It is pretty much everywhere um, and it's done right because there's not white on this. Uh, there's darker colors throughout. So you really just need the black and it really stands out. This is one of the few I wouldn't say few, but this is, yeah, maybe, where the entire, all the panel lining could really be used to great effect on here without it looking like overly animated. Um, like, for instance, if I was to complain about panel lining, um, so I have some in the, uh, in the head here. Let's see. Okay, we can get that. Um, you had to focus, but, you know, it's not like it's even here, but it, that's actually hard to do because the, the way the panel lining works here is the grooves, the depth of the line itself is a little different as it moves around on this piece. So you're not going to get evenness. Now you can go in and clean up, which I did a little, but I almost wanted to leave it where the deeper grooves had more of the panel lining. Now this was done with that accent uh, ink that I've shown before, where you just kind of drop the ink on, you get the... Um, the Q-tip, the real thin Q-tip with some uh, alcohol, or no, actually it's lighter fluid. Well, I think you can use alcohol too, and then just kind of clean it up. But this was like an easy, easy job, uh, you know, to panel line and fun. But some things that it has I wasn't too happy about, and it might not be too noticeable, especially right away. Um, but we could see here on the shoulder, the yellow, the yellow on the piping here. Those are stickers, and I really feel like there's opportunity to make them just separated uh, color separated pieces like down here. This yellow uh, is a piece that was added in. Now the black I did myself because that's supposed to be black, but that yellow was added there. Um, I think they could have done a little better with that here and they could have added a yellow part in here that maybe plugged in <laughs> trying to get from beneath. I had to go in and paint that yellow, which doesn't look too great. It's a little small, but also I needed to get that black down in that area. So you know, I did my best. I would say this doesn't look great, but from a distance and from the location that paint is on down there, it's kind of hard to tell. So not too big of a deal. And uh, spike shield, kind of used to that with Zaku's. That's all going on. Um, um, nothing crazy with the articulation than expect. Okay, side skirt fall off. That's or front skirt. It's always normal. Hey, it's not a it's not a mobile suit if a skirt doesn't fall off. Now putting it back on is a different story. Uh, some other interesting things, um, let's see, articulation, it, it does a great job moving forward, but I don't think that's as important for mobile suits as being able to move back, which this doesn't do. This doesn't do, because you think flight mode, right? Uh, they they work, I mean, look at, okay, so look at all of that, okay, the skirt fell off again, but look at all that articulation here and how it moves forward. 
you would just think though that you would want it to move back so it could do more flight stuff and it uh no so anyway there's that wow the other one the other side fell off that's uh so that it kind of brings me to like my biggest complaint with this suit and i think it might have to do with a couple factors so this is newer so it has a lot of um newer parts to it it's not like it's necessarily a newer design but in terms of the halfway animation coming out the design they're coming to out with like i used pretty much all the parts on the runners to put it that way um so it's all new stuff but maybe be due to the size it being bigger they probably couldn't make some pieces more complex maybe because that would cost more because what's weird is like the hands like right off the bat even from a distance these hands they're just so big i mean like look at the the zaku two hand compared to that i mean the size difference is crazy and so this just looks too much like a toy from a distance. I, I wish with the hands at that size, they would have just went ahead and went with the uh, articulated fingers. That kind of gives more of a look looking at some sort of scale model. I mean, the hands here just really make it look very toy-like. Um, again, I don't want to complain too much. This wasn't too expensive um, and it looks cool. Uh, but that's one of the main complaints. So I would say the hands could be better there's i wish there was more back uh abdomen articulation like going backwards and the yellow where the color separation on like you know some of these pieces could have been better i mean i guess i could just paint this that's up here really um so i could do that in the future um as well as the stickers although it doesn't show up too bad um anyway you know another thing to look at real quick is because this is the messer from hathaway I do have the, this isn't a model kit, this is actually the Robot Spirits and it won't even fit on screen, but this is the uh, the Penelope. Let me see if I can get it off the stand and uh, I'll uh, yeah, have it. I, man, yeah, this, this thing's just huge. So I have this in a crazy pose where, yeah, it's just kind of standing there. And so you can kind of see, it's funny because you can see with the Messer how like they're almost, again, the, the Robot Spirits, high grades, are supposed to be the general same scale. There could be a slight difference, but this is the general idea, like of how large, you know, compared to Penelope the Messer is, which the Penelope looks like it's gigantic, but next to the Messer, you know, they, they seem to be more evenly matched. It's just, there's a lot of that armor. Uh, <laughs> I can't even fit it in screen. All that mobile armor on here that makes the Penelope so big. All right, let's uh, take a look at the manual. Typical manual, right? And I mean, I, I'm proud of myself with how this turned out. In fact, what, when I look at the eye, they make that very glowy. This is when I'd get with the Midnight Hatter and yeah, just paint in a little uh, dot there just to kind of give it that uh, that glow effect. Obviously, it's probably done with the computer, but still. Um, yeah, shield, just looking at where I put in the black there. I mean, really, it's, it's crazy how much you can make this look exactly like what they're intending. Okay, so the only thing I didn't do, and I might do eventually, is let's look at the gun here. Another area, uh, I guess my fourth complaint, although I think it is in line with the color separation is, you know, you had to build the gun. They could have added maybe a couple more pieces just to make it to where it already had the color separation or make it where the majority of it is this green and then there's just stickers for the other part or I would just then color the other part with like gun metal or something. Um, I, I, yeah, I just think it's crazy that the gun's all this one solid piece um of this color and it, okay so beam rifle let's see it's showing down here in the color guide uh light gray part lime green so that's where we get that green look so if i was to yeah get some white some cream yellow lime green i could make that and then yeah color it and i wouldn't want to hand paint it so i'd probably uh yeah i to make that color i would have to hand paint it or unless they sell it as a spray can, I don't know. But yeah, looking at other parts in the manual here real quick. Uh, yeah, lots of color in some areas. It's one of those that, you know, fold out like this. Um, so we have, you know, the picture. We got a lot of good color for the build. The build was easy. This was not a difficult build. And also, I felt like there were no small parts. It's a bigger mobile suit. The parts are a little bit bigger and chunkier. So really... Um, yeah, and if you want to pause at any point, you can. But really, like this thing was an easy build, a fun build. Just some frustrations when it when it comes to like the hands, the color separation, having to put the yellow stickers on. Should have just painted. Probably still could. So yeah, there's that.
Now to look at accessories, again, not much here. Not much here. Um, you've you've got the shield um, that has a connector piece here, so you can you know put two different places if you wanted to. Oh, the arm seems like it's about to slip. Okay. Um, let's see. So it's got these beam sabers, and these are like the most underdesigned beam sabers I've ever seen. They just look like that. And you know, simply you just pop it in the hand like this. Like this is very basic. Like this is like the most high grade you can make a high grade, almost like entry grade. Um, but yeah, it comes with the two yellow um, beam saber blades. Uh, so th those look pretty cool. Um, and it comes with uh, this little stand adapter, but it's not just for any stand type. It's like a specific model kit stand type. Like there's these Stands you can normally get off of Amazon really easily. I use a lot of them, Robot Spirits. You can usually use them with model kits because this doesn't have a built-in stand adapter. So you use this, yet specifically requires those types where it's almost like there's the peg and then it kind of squares off before it goes. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, but kind of restricting on that. So the other thing is you can store beam sabers in here and I kind of like it because it's like impossible to get it back out once you get it in, but that just means less chance of it falling and losing it. Um, uh, but another interesting thing is you can fit a, uh, and I haven't bothered with it, but you can actually fit a beam saber up in here for him to grab, um, which is kind of interesting. You just put one there. Um, so I guess that's, I guess if the arm can reach over and grab it, this arm can reach over and grab these, or can this arm grab those down there? Um, you know what, one other thing I want to look at, because I didn't really look at that, I'm always interested in how thrusters look. Um, uh, and again, Evolution of Xeon uh, design, this is still being done in Anaheim Electronics. Look at the two yellow vents in the front with this. We don't normally see that with Zaku's um, or Xeon stuff. That was like a Federation thing, but then it started rolling out to all type of suits. Yeah, there's some more thrusters down there, but here's some interesting thruster uh, backpack thing it's got where, yeah, it's got these two flight thruster things and um, there's articulation there. Uh, yeah, the back actually does look pretty cool too, but uh, in terms of Universe Lord, just looking at the thrusters here, thrusters here, thrusters here, that doesn't seem like a lot for like a space or flight type that we would normally see added on to mobile suits, especially because of how big this is. But it could just be this time period within the UC timeline. These uh, mobile suits are just so powerful uh, that it doesn't really need too much because the output is so high. Anyway, just one last look at this because I think it looks cool. I just really think this was just kind of a mediocre Gumpla. Even though it looks cool, it's fun to build. I'd almost say it's worth it. It's just not going to be, it's just going to have some disappointments that you don't see with other model kits. That's really it. But I mean, with the price that you can get this out right now, I, I think it's worth it. Now, there is another version. It's like a captain or a commander. There's, I think it's commander. And it's like purple, I believe. Uh, that would be one to get next, even though that's kind of higher in price. Well, there you have it. That is the Messer High Grade uh, Gumpla from uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway. It, it's just cool to get more stuff in that uh, that specific series of Hathaway. We're going to get the other films. You know, we've already got the first one. There's been like, what, three iterations of the Robot Spirits, Kasai Gundam and Penelope Gundam. Um, when it comes to Messer, it's just the, the Gumpla we have of those two Messer, this one and that uh, Commander type. So, uh, curious to get more of that stuff. And also, it's very interesting we see less because these are bigger kits so they're probably more expensive and probably take up more time to manufacture to send out so yeah kind of curious that you don't see this stuff uh as often really but anyway yeah guys thanks for watching uh let me know what you think give this video a like if you think it's cool and check the links in the description for the discord really cool community and also the patreon and youtube membership has the same benefits are really cool stuff so check that out and let me know what you think if you like the benefits let me know if you have a suggestion of how to change things or if something's not working for you let me know on that but anyway guys thanks for watching we'll talk later